Yeah, normal is very boring. Yeah. <laughs> There's a place for it in the world, but how do you develop your own eccentricity, your off-centeredness? So that you make your own idiosyncratic contribution to the world. It's about pushing those boundaries, you know. Um, that's a terrible cliche. <laughs> It's overcoming that voice in your head, which you've all got, strangely, that you're not good enough. Once you let go of that voice, and you become more of your own character, and then you start liking the character you are, even if it pisses other people off. <laughs> you know, you can't please everyone. You may as well make sure that you're not displeasing yourself all the time. We are born creative beings. We're born playful beings. And then we have it stamped out of ourselves by the school system, ironically. And so we get tighter and tighter and we sit stiller and stiller in a chair. It's horrifying the divorce that we have with our own creativity. It's this question of giving yourself permission. And maybe writing helps that because in writing you can be characters that you would never be in your normal life. I read a biography of Quentin Tarantino once and his best friend said thank goodness he ended up being a movie director and script writer otherwise he would have been a mass murderer so <laughs> I like to think that artists would have been terrible human beings if they hadn't been artists you know <laughs> The page is a very safe place. You can be whatever you like on the page. And maybe it allows you to relax a little bit more in your life. It's about getting curious about what's happening to you so that you live more deeply. Two things happened in my life which made me stop and consider that I didn't know where I was going and I didn't know what was going to happen next. I got a, an eye condition, an autoimmune condition, and the other one was my son had a very serious injury, a head injury. Extremely anxious time, you know. I couldn't see a way out of this situation. I had to um, find ways of coping with it. And writing was the thing that got me through, actually. It contains you when you are flung apart with anxiety. It gives you a tool to take the thing that disturbs you and explore it out in the world. So it doesn't just sit as this mush in your body causing grief. You start bringing it out and giving it shape in the world. And then you start having this conversation with what you don't know about your own anxiety. What we know and our identity is the small and the unconscious is there big. Our egos are little corks floating on the ocean. So you've got this massive resource of the unconscious and we are trained, I think, by society not to trust the unconscious. You know, you've got to get curious. Why are we doing this? You never know what's going to arrive from the unconscious because you're not working with what you know. So there'll be a little phrase that comes to mind that's a poetic phrase that could be the beginning of a poem or there'll be an image that draws you which could be the beginning of a painting. Or there's a feeling inside you that wants expression through movement. Take it seriously, don't say, oh, that's rubbish, let me go and watch TV. You know, take it and explore it and play with it. We are storytellers. We are born storytellers. We valued our own creativity for our its own sake, for our own mental health sake. I think the world would look like a very different place. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching this week's film. We really appreciate all your wonderful comments. It really helps to motivate us wanting to make these films even better for you guys. If you would consider donating towards us and helping support us, just click on the link below.